This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Fighting crime in Cunningham. We talk with the president of the borough's Crime Watch next. Good evening and thanks for joining us at SSP TV News. I'm Ken Kara, and you're viewing us in spectacular HD on Service Electric Cablevision Channel 513 and in SD on Channel 13. To stream us on your TV with Apple TV or Google Chromecast, simply download the Samsung Productions app. Here's your Wednesday headlines from SSP TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. A candidate's debate will take place tomorrow night for the three Republican candidates seeking the newly drawn 8th Congressional District seat. They are John Schrin of Palmer, Palmer Township, Northampton County, Robert Knagel of Springbrook Township, and Joe Peters of Scranton. The League of Women Voters of Lackawanna County and the Political Science Department of the University of Scranton are hosting the event. It will take place at 7 p.m. tomorrow at the Muscovitz Theater at the Denaples Center at the University of Scranton. The Republican primary winner will face Democratic incumbent Matt Cartwright of Mu Music. Hazleton is in the national spotlight for its revitalization efforts. The Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress has been designated as an accredited Main Street America program. The program recognizes commitment to preservation-based economic development and community revitalization through the Main Street approach. There's a state program, you know, which we're designated Main Street program for the state, but now we're also a, a nationally accredited program. So that's that just means that we, we met some higher benchmarks and uh, for performance and for um, you know the work that we are, we're doing downtown and so we're proud of that. That's it's something to celebrate. It's it's something good for the community. I would think that that helps you then when you're trying to go forward with any projects or what to say that you've received that recognition. Yeah, it's uh it's I think there's about 800 uh 800 or 850 communities throughout the country that are nationally accredited and so we're one and and we're proud of that. Locally, the revitalization effort generated $6.5 million of private funding in building renovations in 2017. One community in our area is asking residents to get involved with the new Crime Watch effort. Lisa Sugard has a story. The Borough of Cunningham has a brand new Crime Watch organization. Today, I'm pleased to welcome to our studios Danny Ryman. He is the president of that new organization. Danny, you've lived in Cunningham for many, many years, and this was important to you, so We've already had two meetings. It's up and running. How's it going? It's going great, Lisa. Um, we're excited. Our first meeting, we had uh, 34 participants at uh, the inaugural meeting. The second meeting, we topped that at 36. And we're excited because the community is engaging and empowering themselves to be involved. So you're looking to be proactive. We were talking, you said you're looking to be the eyes and the ears of the police to help uh, Tony Harris, who is the new police chief in Cunningham. So you're just trying to keep a, you know, the community close together, close knit so that they can be aware of what's going on. That's correct. And without the support of Cunningham Borough Council, our mayor, uh, police chief Tony Harris, and, and the community itself behind this, we can't be successful. We, we recognize the fact that crime is out there mm -hmm. and, and we want to be proactive before it hits us, uh, before it's too late, so to speak. Very good. Now, you're going to be meeting, you told me, bi-monthly, the next meeting coming up on June 19th, that's a Tuesday, at 6 o'clock at the Borough Building. Who should be at this meeting? Do you have to live in Cunningham? How does this work? Well, it's a great question, Lisa, and the answer is anyone can come to the meeting. Do you have to be a resident of Cunningham? Certainly, we'd, we'd appreciate that. That would be uh, fundamental, uh, but it's not an uh, actual requirement. We, we can have anyone, family members, friends, neighbors. If you're not sure, do you want to be a member? Do you want to join? Come to a meeting or two, uh, feel it out, see if you enjoy the education part of it, the topics, the presenters. Uh, you know, that's the important thing. Uh, we keep it to uh, limit it to one hour. Uh, and and we, we try and bring that educational component into the meeting so that you can walk away with something. Now, obviously, you're just getting established. You told me uh, Attorney Don Karpovich is helping to create the bylaws for the organization. Eventually, you're going to have to do something to raise money. You want Crime Watch signs to put up in the community, and you're looking to do the first ever National Night Out. Yes, we're, we're excited about that because first ever National Night Out, August 7th. So it's the uh, following Valley Day weekend uh, on that Tuesday. And at, at nationally, uh, 
most communities uh, have participated in this. This is our first ever, so we want to plan and prepare ourselves for a dynamic rollout to the community. If anybody is interested in helping, joining, do they call you, Danny? Yes, they can call me. My number's in the phone book. Um, they can also attend a meeting, which, uh, as we said, the next meeting is in June, June 19th. And, you know, just come, participate, uh, see if you're interested. And if anybody's out there interested, too, you're looking for sponsors for the signs and sponsors, I guess, for National Night Out as well. Correct. So as we grow, as we crawl before we walk, uh, we will need help with some donations. They don't have to be, uh, you know, large. Any little bit helps. Sponsoring a sign, sponsoring something, uh, a table, a booth for National Night Out in Cunningham, uh, that would be a tremendous help for us. All right, very good. Danny Ryman, the president of the new Cunningham Borough Crime Watch. If you're interested in getting involved, again, the next meeting, June 19th at 6 p.m. at the Cunningham Borough Building, or give them a call and get involved and keep the community safe. Thanks, Lisa. There's a benefit in drums on Friday for the Domestic Violence Service Center. The DVSC has been around for around 40 years, helping those in Luzerne and Carbon counties. They offer emergency shelter and transitional housing for victims of domestic violence and more, including a 24-hour hotline for those in need. The number for the hotline is 1-800-424-5600. You can also visit their website, domesticviolenceservice.org. This Friday's event is at Dano's Pub from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's in drums. The cost is $15 for some light food fare, plus there will be drink specials and 50-50s. You have less than one week to enter the Laurel Mall's Mother's Day giveaway. Drop off your mall sales receipts with a minimum purchase of $20 in the drop-off at Center Court. Include your name, address, phone number, and email. You could win a $350 or $100 gift certificate for mom. For an additional chance to win, go to standardspeaker.com. The deadline is May 8th. And a reminder that our SSP TV programming is available tonight and every Wednesday from 6.30 until 8 p.m. on our High Definition Channel 513. You can also catch a rebroadcast of SSP TV News tonight at 8 p.m. on both channels, Channel 13 and in HD on 513. Still to come, Standard Speaker Sports Editor Dave Seaman takes a look back to the time Saquon Barkley played against the basketball team from our area. And I had no idea what food plots were until Dennis Gans came into the studio to explain. That's the topic of his next hunting segment. This is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Dennis Gantz, the host and producer of Wild Bout Hunt and Scene right here on SSP TV, is back with us again in our studios. We dragged him out of the hunt and woods to come and talk to us today. And you told me you're talking about food plots. And I was like, what do you mean food plots? <laughs> but you're growing food for the animals that you're trying to hunt. Yeah, uh, food plots have been something that's been growing in popularity over the last many, many years. Uh, a lot of people are doing wildlife management and food plots are something that people are adding to their property. So now tell us, where do we put this food plot and how do we know what to grow and how to grow it? Okay, well, uh, one of the things, the first thing you want to take into consideration is where are you going to put that food plot? You know, where, where do you have the ability to plant something? Uh, a lot, some people may have a large tract of land where they actually will have the, the ability to go in with heavy uh, uh, farm equipment and turn soil and so on and so forth. Some people, like ourselves, um, we have a lot of wooded areas, so we may only have uh, a small eighth of an acre maybe or if that to plant a food plot and we're really looking at something that's going to be able to provide a food source for the deer that's a growing food source we're not baiting uh, we have to make con consideration the laws in Pennsylvania we can't put out any kind of uh, uh, bait uh, that's in a pile but we can grow plants that deer can come and wildlife can come in and eat so you want to keep that into consideration and then you're going to have to clear that area so that's something to consider is how much work are you going to have to put into it uh, and what kind of tools are you going to need to use hand tools if you're doing it back in the woods you know you may not be able to get heavy equipment quads or anything back in there so you may just need a rake maybe some pruners a chainsaw and uh, a little bit of elbow work uh, to put it put in your food plot 
Now, is this only for deer that you do this, or is this for other animals as well? No, um, there's. This is basically something that you can use for deer or turkey. There's lots of different uh, blends of seeds that you can use out there, and there's so many different food plot companies that are out there today. Uh, we use Killer Food Plots, and uh, they have a lot of different literature that you can get that'll help you as far as what you need to do. Um, testing your soil is something. It's a very simple thing. It's a twenty dollar uh, soil test kit, and that'll help determine if you have to put lime fertilizer down into it and then they'll educate you as to what seed blends to put in that are going to work best for the area that you're at. And type of things like clover and that, is that what we're growing? Yeah, you're going to be looking at clover, maybe chicory, um, some kind of beets, something like that that's going to provide uh, a, a heavy protein, a legume, like a soybean maybe, if you're putting it in a bigger field that the deer are going to be able to and the, and the wildlife eat throughout the summer months and then into the carry that into the fall. All righty. Well, great advice. And season three is underway. Yes. What? A third of the way, you told me third already. Of the way through. through yeah. Um, so, uh, how's it been going? It's been going really well. We're excited about it and uh, hope everybody's enjoying the shows. All righty. And that new episode airs each and every Monday at 7 30 p.m. right here on SSP TV. So, we'll be waiting to see what happens this week. Oh, yeah. You, wanna miss, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dennis, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Don't miss Wild Bout Hunting here on SSP TV. A new episode Mondays at 7 30, but then rebroadcast throughout the week so be sure to tune in time now for weather on ssp tv news a waning gibbous moon near the sugarloaf mountain this morning in the valley and we would like to welcome back our weather sponsor valley high food drive-in in west hazelton valley high will officially open up for the season this saturday may 5th here's our forecast now from the national weather service tonight will be partly cloudy and how about this for a low 61 degrees thursday we're going to get up to 82 degrees we do have a 30 percent chance of precipitation showers and maybe a thunderstorm new rainfall amounts of less than a tenth of an inch possible thursday night chance of showers and thunderstorms it will be mostly cloudy low of 62 degrees 40 percent chance of some rain friday showers likely up to a 60 percent chance maybe a thunderstorm mostly cloudy high of 77 at night 30 percent chance of showers and thunderstorms mostly cloudy low of 53 saturday is partly sunny with a high of 69 at night partly cloudy low of 47 degrees and then sunday partly sunny highs in the mid 60s mostly cloudy at night lows in the mid 40s tonight's weather is brought to you by valley high food drive-in the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant stop by for our ice cream and yogurt now featuring fat free no sugar added soft frozen yogurt with flavors like vanilla strawberry and strawberries and cream we also have burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. For daily hours, call 570-455-5362. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Stapleton. And like us on Facebook. We've told you about it for months, the campaign called the Strive to Revive the Hazy Pool, and that's the swimming pool at the Hazelton YWCA. John Washington is the marketing manager for the Y. You don't have good news, you have great news. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, like I said, we were very thankful for the Strive to Revive the Hazy Pool campaign. Um, our goal was $75,000. Uh, initially, to start off, we exceeded that goal, and we raised the campaign to $125,000. We closed our pool down for the renovations, and we have been having a tremendous success. The pool will be opening back up on May 20th. Um, it'll be open to the public, uh, so please look forward to your qu swim classes for the summer. Please look forward to various new programs in the pool, as far as uh, programs with children with disabilities. Like I said, we have a lot coming and a lot in store uh, for the pool and the unveiling. I know it was a tough thing to go through, that you had growing pains, you know, you had to get that ready and renovate it, but I'm sure the community will be amazed at what they see now that these beautiful renovations are just about done. Yes, they will. Like I said, we are redoing all the walls. Like I said, we are, we are taking a lot of steps in order to improve the pool. Uh, and like I said, and I would like to thank everyone in the community, every organization, every sponsor, everyone that we had to donate uh, to the pool. We truly thank you and the Y will be shooting ourselves into the 21st century. Oh, we're excited. Mm -hmm. We can't wait to see it when it's all completed and open up to the public. Again, as John said, Sunday, May 20th is the magic day when it mm -hmm. reopens. Uh, this means so much to people of all ages because the little ones start there mm -hmm. and the senior citizens are there. So this is literally a facility that is used by the entire community. Yes, it is. Like I said, we have 
people from all over, not even just the Hazleton area, because we are one of the few local pools here in the area. So like I said, and we welcome everyone back. Like I said, please come down, look into memberships, like I said, and see how we can benefit you if, with our pool. All right. If you want more information about the pool or any of the wonderful programs at the Hazleton YWCA, give them a call. John and everybody there will certainly be glad you did. Had a great birthday party when I was younger at the YWCA pool. Glad to see it getting renovated. Here's your midday winning lottery numbers here on SSP TV News. Pick 292, pick 3095, pick 4, 5, and then 3 fours. Pick 5, 6, 5, 1, 1, 1. The wild number is 7. It's Dave Day after the break. Time now for sports on SSP TV News. It's the first May Dave Day here with Dave Seaman, Standard Speaker, Sports Editor. And Dave, I was flipping through the paper, I think over the weekend, I did a double take because I saw basketball and I saw the Cougars and I was like, is that Saquon Barkley? And, and it was. So you wrote an article about Saquon Barkley taking on the Cougars, I think two years, his junior and senior year. Just talk about how that came about and some of the interesting things you, you found out while working on that. I, I just happened to find a picture in our files, you know, Sa Saquon Barkley playing a game against the Cougars back in 2013, 14. And I said, that might make an interesting story. Let's see what I could find. And uh, lo and behold, I found another picture. And then I just asked Coach Joseph what he remembered about uh, playing against him. Or, and he gave me, you know, he gave me the detailed scouting report. And uh, well, what I put in the story, he was a freak athlete. Even back then, you knew he was a freak athlete. Uh, he had gotten better, you know, throughout his junior and senior years as a basketball player. And uh, there, was, there was no question that he was a, a, an outstanding athlete. And uh, uh, he was something to be reckoned with, on, even on a basketball court. You have to read Dave's article, but I do want to talk about, I think, current Cougar. Was it Josh Samick? Who is the Eagles fan who, who you talked with? Yeah, it was Josh Samick, <laughs> who's uh, as diehard an Eagle fan and as diehard a Twitter uh, user as anybody <laughs> as anybody I've, I've come across, uh, you know, that athletes that I've covered. And, uh, you know, Josh is, uh, isn't afraid to make his feelings known. He's, a, you know, like I said, he's a diehard Eagles fan. And, uh, you know, he's looking forward to the uh, competition uh, between Eagles and the Giants with Saquon Barkley. Very, very interesting read there. While we're talking about the NFL draft, Dave, let's talk about Baker Mayfield going number one from Oklahoma, going to the Cleveland Browns. Um, John Eric Pola here, very on board. He thinks this is going to be great for the Browns. Ron Marchetti, not so much. I don't know how I feel. How, how do you feel about Baker Mayfield going um, number one? You think it'll work out in Cleveland? Uh, no doubt he's a winner. I mean, you look everywhere he's gone, he's, you know, he's been a winner. He has an attitude that, you know, his teammates obviously love to play for him. Uh, he's been a, a leader of a lot of dynamic offenses at Oklahoma. Uh, there's there's no question that he's going to be able to move the ball and uh, you know he puts the throws in the right spot too he's not uh, I don't think he has the you know a dynamic arm strength as a uh, a lot of big time NFL quarterbacks but uh, I said you want a leader you want somebody to to, to get a fan base fired up and uh, he's your guy and Dave, um, the 76ers, let's go to the NBA playoffs right now. Down 0-1 in their best of seven series against the Boston Celtics. It took a great effort by Boston, Dave. I mean, 17 three-pointers to get that first victory. But it, but it's a long road here. Yeah, it's a, it's a seven-game series. And the Sixers were, you know, playing their first game in uh, six days. Uh, so I, I think maybe they got a little bit rusty, you know, and the Celtics are still coming off a high. They, you know, great finishing kick to their series against Milwaukee. And uh, their young players are fantastic. I mean, everybody talks about the Sixers having a uh, fantastic fantastic young team. Uh, Boston's just as good too. And uh, you don't forget too, the Celtics are playing without Gordon Hayward and they're playing without Kyrie Irving too. Two of their guys that they're counting on to, you know, take them on a long playoff run. Um, and the guys they have right now, and they have an outstanding young coach and Brad Stevens. So uh, uh, Celtics are uh, going to be a formidable foe for the Sixers, no doubt. And Dave, let's finish up locally. Big track and field meet tonight. Battle for the division championship in the Schuylkill League between Monoy Area and Marion. Monoy Area, Dave, almost year in and year out. Very consistent there in that program. Uh, Meredith Rhodes in the hurdles. Uh, Megan Babinski doing well in the long jump. Madison Cavanis in discus and javelin. And then for the boys, MJ Terry in the sprints. And I think it's Willie Streisel um, doing the distance events, having a lot of success locally. But also big softball games coming up. Um, Tamaqua and North Schuylkill, two of those games this week to decide. Now, um, at least it'll be a factor in the division. Division one championship in the Schuylkill League. I'm leading into softball because Hazleton area softball team, Dave, um, that one loss to Pittston area, I think that game coming up maybe in two weeks, a rematch between those two teams, but um, they just keep rolling along. Yeah, they, they do, and I think that the Lady Cougars have circled May 10th. Uh, that's the rematch with Pittston area. That game will be here. Uh, if you got a chance, go see that game because they're two fabulous softball teams, and uh, 
uh, we talked about all season. This uh, this Hazleton area team can hit from one through nine. Uh, they, they, you know, it doesn't matter. They, they've switched their lineup around a little bit. Uh, Coach Heather Nat has, has done that, and uh, you know the results have been the same. I mean, they, they've been really pounding the ball, ripping teams, and uh, you know that's going to be their mo. Uh, and uh, you know, get uh, steady pitching from Erica Book, who's uh, been there before. Uh, she had a great run last year. You know, led them to the state final, and uh, you, you know, get solid pitching, good defense, and uh, the way they can hit the ball, you, you know, they're going to be tough out. Make sure you're always grabbing the standard speaker. Never know what kind of stories you're going to see. I was so happy to see Saquon there, Dave. He put on a little bit of weight since he since he played Hazel. Uh, there's no doubt he put on a little <laughs> bit of weight, and uh, you know, I, I I think he. I, I'm not sure if he plays basketball anymore, but I, I don't think he needs to. Ron Marchetti did point out. I should point out right now, and uh, I'll double check to make sure if I'm right. Notre Dame had some um, dr top draft picks as as well in, in the NFL. Yeah, they had uh, two first round uh, <laughs> offensive linemen went in the first round, and uh, they're, they're both going to be outstanding. One uh, went to the 49ers, and I'm not sure it escapes me right now who the other one went to, but uh, they're, they're going to be outstanding. They also had two other players drafted this year, and uh, they're, they're, they're a pretty young team too last year. So I, I think Notre Dame fans have a lot to be excited about the w direction their program's going, and uh, of course, as Penn State uh, followers. Uh, uh, we're we're going to be uh, looking a lot to look forward to with the Nittany Lions as well. College football season not too far away, I guess. Dave, thank you so much. Still a lot to go in spring sports. Make sure you're reading all about it in the standard speaker and keeping up right here on SSB TV News. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's talk. The town of Tamaqua Public Library will be having a free comic book day on Saturday, May 5th from 9.30 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. You may receive one comic book per family. For more information, you can call the library at the number on your screen. The Mock Chunk Opera House will be having a tribute to Johnny Cash on Saturday, May 5th at 8 p.m. Tickets are $25. For more information, you can go to the Mock Chunk Opera House website, which is listed on your screen, or call 570-325-0249. And one today's social report with the American Legion Rider 781 having a veteran's clothing drive on Sunday, May 6th from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. For more information, you can email the email on your screen. And that's today's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News would like to send our sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Anna M. D'Alessio, formerly of Hazleton. Funeral is Thursday at 3 p.m. at the Rothermel Thickenbinder Funeral Home in Palmyra. Friends may call Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the funeral home. Helen M. Cuzo of Hazel Township. Mass is Friday at 10 a.m. at St. Michael Ukrainian Church. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home in Hazelton. And Helen Margavich of West Hazelton. Mass is Friday at 11.30 a.m. at St. Francis of Assisi Roman Catholic Church in Norristown. Friends may call Friday from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. at the church. The West Laurel Hill Funeral Home is in charge of their arrangements. Attention pay-per-view subscribers. If you see your name now on SSP TV News, you can call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Today's winner is David Dieter of Ringtown. Call now and leave a message at 570-455-7267, extension 104, for your free movie. It's a beautiful day for a track meet. We'll have coverage of the Marion Mono area girls and boys tomorrow right here on SSP TV News Plus. It's Thursday, so that means our volunteer of the week. See you then. Take it easy, everyone. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.